This is Eugene Panrikovich. I'm the Laptop Screen Doc, and the other website is www.screensurgeons.com. Today we have a HP Mini 311 netbook computer with a cracked screen, and we're going to show you how to replace the cracked screen on the HP Mini 311. Okay, before we get started, before we do anything, we want to remove the battery so as not to damage the laptop when we work on it. To do this, we flip the laptop over, slide the two levers out, and slide the battery out. Now the laptop is safe to work on. In order to get to the screen, you need to remove the screen bezel, the plastic frame that goes around the screen, and we'll start doing that in just a second. But before we do that, we're going to go over the tools we're going to use today. Um, we start with the most important one is an electronics screwdriver with a PH1 bit. PH stands for Phillips, and 1 is the size of the bit. Just in case, we also have a smaller PH0 bit. We also have a pair of metal tweezers to remove any screws that are stuck. And just in case, we have an exacto knife with a pointed blade, but we probably won't use it for this laptop. Okay, let's get started. Uh, for most laptops, in order to remove the screen bezel, you have to remove some screws up front, but this one doesn't have any screws up front. The screen bezel just snaps on and off. So we're just going to get started removing the screen bezel. In this case, what I like to do is put my hands on the screen side and use my fingernails or fingertips to start lifting up the bezel and listen for snapping sounds. Once you hear snapping sounds, that's a good sign. That means the screen is coming off. If you get stuck at a place, uh, go on to the next place and come back to the place where you're stuck at. So we do the same thing on the bottom. Sometimes there's adhesive on the bottom, so it can be a little bit harder. And we're almost there. And so at this time, what I like to do where the hinge covers are is use my metal tweezers to lift up where the hinge covers are, to lift up the screen bezel where the hinge covers are and the screen is exposed. Okay, so for this type of screen, it's a slim screen, it's thinner than the regular types of screens. It's mounted with some tabs on the, on, on the front of the screen versus other screen where it's mounted by screws that go into the side of the screen. So that does make things a little bit easier for us to remove the screen. So we have four screws to remove where my fingers are, and it looks like we're going to need the smaller PH0 bit to remove these screws. So we go one by one, and remove these screws. And when you do this, make sure the screen assembly is tilted back a little bit so when you remove all the screws, screen just doesn't fall down on you. Okay, and that's three. And that's four. Okay, once the screws are removed, we gently start tilting the screen forward to make sure it's not getting stuck on anything. And right away, we see that there's the webcam cable has some adhesive that's stuck to the back of the screen. So what I have to do is remove the webcam cable, if at all possible, rather than removing the whole webcam. That, that means so that we don't have to reconnect the connector. Sometimes you forget to do that and your webcam doesn't work. So we remove the adhesive that's holding the webcam cable to the back of the screen. And now we can put the screen all the way down. Now this screen has only one connector, and it's at the bottom. And we just have to remove it. 
And the way we do that is we lift up the adhesive tape that's holding the top of the connector. We carefully do that so as not to damage the connector. And then we slowly pull the connector out like so. Okay, before we go any further, I'd like to show you how to reconnect this connector. When you reconnect it, you make, you feel two clicking sounds. You won't hear them, but you'll feel them. And the biggest source of problems I see when people do this at home is that the connector is not fully engaged. So if we can get a good focus here. Let's see, sometimes I can do this, sometimes I can't. There we go. Okay, pause the video right here. This is a good connection. The seam between the connections is closed. There's no gap in the seam and it's fully engaged. So make sure your connection looks like that when you reconnect it for the screen to work properly. Okay, let's go on. Let's disconnect it and take a look at this screen. This is a 11.6 inch LED screen with a connector on the bottom right when you're looking from it. Uh, this is the most common type of screen, so you should be okay with finding this screen. Sometimes connectors in different place, but this, this one, it's a common type, so it should be okay. And let's take a look at the part number. This is what you need to look up when you order it. It's B116. XW01. That's the part number you need to look for. B116XW01. You can or also order this screen from Screen Surgeons from us. And what you get from us is free email and technical support when you do the screen installation. And you also have a compatibility guarantee. If the screen we sent you is not correct, we will send you the right one. So to order from us, go to www.screensurgeons.com. On the bottom, click on Buy a Screen. And then there will be a short form for you to fill out with your email on the laptop model. And once you send that to us, we'll email you the link to the right screen to buy it online. Okay, so once you get your new screen in, connect it as I show you. Put the screws in on the sides here. Snap on the screen bezel, and you're good to go. And that's it. And uh, once again, my name is Eugene Pandrickovich. The name of the website is www.screensurgeons.com. And I'm the laptop screen doc. And thank you very much, and good luck.